keep in mind that all the other query buttons all the other query buttons also are using the same query listener that has an on click event that accepts an argument of v what do you suppose v is in this example what does v represent describe in just english what that represents of the event. It's a view. What is a view again? A view is one of the things on the screen. It's one of the, it's the GUI element. So, whenever you see a view, think it's a GUI element. Alright? So, what do you suppose this view represents? What GUI element? This represents the button that got clicked. If you think about this, if all of these buttons are using the same listener, somehow that listener needs to know what button got clicked, right? Because if I click the PHP button, I want to do a search on PHP. If I click the Android button, I want to do the search on Android, right? So if they all share the same listener, that listener better know which one of those actually got clicked. All right? So you'll notice that any of these on-click listeners, on-click on methods associated with a listener is going to have an argument of the view. And the view is the specific thing on the GUI that this event happened with. All right? So, in this case, if I clicked on the Android button, that view, V, V is going to contain a pointer to that button. All right. If I clicked on PHP, it's going to contain a pointer to the PHP button. And so on down the line. So, you'll notice in a lot of these events, on any of these on-click events, they accept an argument of the view. And the view in this case is whatever GUI element had the is associated with the event. So in other words, to probably put it simply, when you see that view argument V, that represents who got clicked. Alright? And it's important for us to know that because, as you can see, we're sharing that click listener among a bunch of different buttons. So we need to somehow know who got clicked. How do we know who got clicked? We know based on, ouch, based on this argument. Now this is something that's built into the framework, right? We didn't have to code it. On click events, when they get triggered, they tell the method who got clicked through this parameter. So let's look at the first line of that. And it says string button text equals button V That's another one of those statements that's a, that's a mouthful, right? String button text. What's that doing? That's creating a variable called button text. 
of type string. What is that equal to? All right. We know that V is the thing that got clicked on. All right. We know that V is the thing that got clicked on. And we want to pull from V this text. We want to know that, because remember, this text represents the tag that we want to do our search for. Now, a lot of things can be clicked on, not just buttons. We can click on an image if we want to. We can click on a text box if we want to. We can click on any number of different things. So we have to be sure to tell the compiler the thing that's going to be clicked on in this case is a button. So that's what this section of the instruction does. It says, hey, V is the view that got clicked on, and because I have inside information, I know that's always going to be a button. So we want to treat it like a button. So we cast it as a button. All right? Could be any kind of view, but we know because we coded this that it's going to be a button. So we cast it as a button. Now that we've now that we're treating that like a button, we can do and apply all the button methods to it. And in this case, the button methods, we want to get the text of the button and convert it to a string. So when we're done, we have a string variable that corresponds to this, in this case, Android. Which, if you remember, in our shared preferences, is the key that points to the query that we actually want to run. So in this example, I put in Android development as the query, and I put the key as Android. The button contains the name of the key, all right, which is Android. Now that we have the key, we can go and we can grab the actual query. So again, taking a step back and looking at like the bigger picture, stuff that you're going to apply in all your applications, this argument becomes important now because this argument tells us on what view did this event happen. Exactly what is it that we clicked again? Well, it gets passed to the onClick event a pointer to the object that got clicked gets passed to the onClick object as a view that's named V. Because we wrote the code, though, we know that it's not just any view. We know that it has to be a button, right? Because that's, we, we only associated this onClick listener with buttons. Therefore, we can cast it as a button and do all the button things that we want to do to it. So now, we have in our string a variable called button text, the value of Android. We're going to go from there. How do we know, by the way, what the methods are associated with the button? Well, we look at the Java docs, like I did before for the shared preferences. Just like how do I know if I have a key, how do I get the value that belongs to that key? Well, we looked at the shared preferences object, and we saw that there was a get string method, where you give the key that you're interested in, all right, and it returns the value associated with that key. So, we have in the button text variable the key that we're interested in. We then looked in our saved searches, in our shared preferences, to find what is the query that belongs 
to that particular key. So, what was associated with Android? Well, from our shared preferences, we know that it's Android development. So we now have in the, in the string variable query the actual search terms that we're looking for. We then go and pull from our reference file the search URL that we're looking for, and we'll look at that in a second, and we pass the specific query that we're looking for. Essentially, what we're doing is we're forming our URL that we're searching for. Let's look in the string file. The, the search URL is HTTP search Twitter search q equals so in other words what they're saying is if I want to do a search for Android development That's the URL I need to put in. It's actually not allowing me to run it from within a web browser. Um, that's okay. We can run it uh, through our Android app. At any rate, what we're doing here is we're piecing together the URL that we're searching for by taking that hard-coded search URL, in other words, the search, the, the search URL from Twitter, and we're adding on to it the query string. We then create a new intent. And an intent is sort of like we're, we're making a request to start a new activity uh, on our Android device. And in this particular case, our intent is a web intent. In other words, we want to pull up a web page. What do you need when you pull up a web page? Well, you need the URL. And then we were going to start that activity. Now here's the interesting thing. A lot depends on what's installed on this particular device. I don't have the Twitter client installed on this device. Therefore it brought up the um, it brought up the um, web browser and did the search through the web browser. If I had the Twitter client installed, it would ask me what client or, or what, what application I want to use to open up this particular query. Because if I had the Twitter application installed on this device, this device would know that Twitter can be handled either through the web browser or through the Twitter application. Let me... try real quick installing the Twitter application on this. Yeah, shoot. It's asking for an account and I don't remember the account information. In a nutshell, anytime a intent can be satisfied by more than one application, you'll be prompted for it. And it's kind of like in Windows, you know, you may have a, uh, a JPEG file, for example, on Windows. And if you double click on it, there's a default program to open it. 
But there may be other programs that open it too. For example, you might have both Paint and Photoshop installed on your Windows machine. And both of them can handle JPEGs. Well, the way Windows handles it is it has a default. But if you write mouse on it, you can say open with. Android handles it a little different way. If there are two things that can handle this intent, this request, it will ask you which one you want. And then you can choose to say, hey, default this choice from now on. All right. At any rate, on our particular device, we only have uh, the web browser installed. Therefore, we um, were not offered a, an option. Anyhow, so that's how that does it. What are the key things for this use case? Again, the fact that this listener gets associated with every button. Therefore, the button, or I'm sorry, therefore this method, this on-click method, needs to be able to differentiate between which button got clicked. How does it differentiate that? It differentiates that based on the view argument, which is the object that that event occurred upon. So that view object V is the object that got clicked. We know it's a button, so we treat it like button, and then we can go and find the query that matches it and go on from there. Questions at this point on this one? Let's look at the edit. The edit button works pretty much the same way, right? Because every tag that we've created, the edit button for that tag um, is the same uh, or has the same listener, this edit button listener. So, what do we do? Remember that V is the thing that got clicked on. So, the first thing that we do is we have to find out what row got clicked on, right? When we go to edit this, when we go and click this edit button, all we know is this is a button that says edit. What is it that we want to edit? Well, of course we want to edit the thing that's next to it right down the line. Well, how are we going to associate this button with that button? Well, we know they're in the same row. All right. So, the first thing that we need to do, when this button is clicked and we want to handle it, the first thing we want to do is we want to identify what row got clicked. Because once I've identified what row got clicked, I can then ask for what is the tag button in that row. And that's the guy that I want to edit. So it's a little more complicated. With the query, this button contained the name of the thing I wanted to search for. So I could just go and do the search. This button doesn't contain the name of the thing I want to edit. It just contains the word edit. So therefore, to find the name of the thing that I want to edit, I have to first find this row and then look at the tag button in this row. So, how do we do that? This one is similar to the other one. We have that argument V, which indicates the object to whom the event occurred, or on which the event occurred. We call the function to get the parent. All right. If you think about this, that button Where does this button live? This button lives inside a table row. That table row lives inside a table. That table lives inside a bigger table row. And that table row lives inside a bigger table, 
and that table lives inside the main content field. All right, we're going to look at this here. This row of buttons, this button lives in this table row. This table row lives in this table. That table lives in the table that, or the table, a table row in the bigger table, which is the content view. So what we're interested in finding is what is the tag button associated with this edit button. How do we find that? <coughs> First thing we do is we find the parent of that view. Now notice that we can just ask for the view's parent. We didn't have to do any casting, at least not yet. Why not? Well, because regardless of the kind of view V is, it's going to have a parent. Every view has a parent. Every view belongs inside of something. So we can ask for, hey, what is the view that contains the view that got clicked on? Remember, V is the view that got clicked on. What is the view that contains that? Now, again, we know, because we've written this, that that view is going to be itself a table row. So we cast the parent of the clicked view to the table row, because we know it's a table row. We then can look for the search button inside, not the entire view, but inside just that table row. And again, here's an interesting thing about this, and, and this is something that's pretty powerful in this, is really everything on the screen is a view. And you have views inside of views, and views inside of views, inside of views, and so on. So whatever we can do on one view, we can do on other views. In this particular case, what we're doing is just like up here where we grabbed a pointer to that edit text box by searching the main content view, we can find We can find the button, not in the whole view, but in the table row. That is, we can find the search button in that specific table row. So in that way, what we're going to do is we're going to find, once we find the row that this is in, we ask for the search button that belongs in that row. So if we had 20 of these, it's not going to find those other 19. It's just going to find that one because all we're doing is we're looking inside that row. We then do kind of what we did before. We grab the text from that button and use that to set the tag text box. We grab from the shared preferences the query and put it in the query box. So if we click edit, we get Android, and we get Android development up there to edit it. All right, the last use case that I want to consider is what if we open up the application and there's something already there? there's something that's already there, then the shared preference is not going to be empty. Notice that the very down in the last instruction here we called refresh buttons. Now we've called refresh buttons before. All right? We called that function before. This time we're giving a null argument. The other time we were giving it I think, let's see, one or two arguments. I forget what. One argument, the new tag. Refresh buttons is the, bu is the function that draws these buttons. 
And it works on in, in two different modes. If we give it a string, we've added a new search tag, and we want to add the button just for that one search tag. If we call it with a null argument, then we want to display all of the search tags from the shared preferences. Okay, so two different modes. We've already seen the one mode work, right? If we've passed it a tag, we go in and if new tag is not equal to null, we go and we make the tag for that new tag that we entered in. We grab the position from the say, our shared preferences array and we go and we insert those but or yeah those buttons in that position. If, however, there's no argument given, all right. If there's no argument given, that means we want to display all the buttons. So what do we do? We loop through the list of tags from the shared preferences, and then we go in and we make a set of buttons for each of those, right in order. All right, there's a lot going on in this application. And my suggestion would be to take some time to um, review this and um, try to understand it. Let me pose to you a question that we'll talk about for a minute here. And we may or may not do this on Monday, but I want you to think about it anyhow, and I want you to ask questions. And we might do this in class, we might not. Notice how in this application, we can clear all the tags, but there's no way for us to just clear one tag. So if I had two tags here, I could clear both of them, but there's no way I could clear one of these individually. All right. What would I have to add to this application to allow me to be able to delete one of these? Or better yet, what if I don't want to delete just one of them? What if I wanted to go down and delete and, and check the ones that I wanted to delete? All right? And I wanted to go in and check the ones I wanted to delete and then click a delete button and then go and delete it. What would I have to do to do that? What would I have to change? We don't have to actually make the change because, again, part of the battle is understanding like where the code's going to live. So I'll look at the schedule, and we may or may not do this on Monday, but I at least want to spend a minute talking about this. I'm not going to write the code. We're just going to identify what we would change. So what we want to do is we want to add a checkbox. And we want to add a second button here. The clear button does what it does now. We also want a clear selected button. And what that would do is that would delete the ones that we've checked. All right? So what would we have to change? Would we have to change anything in the main XML file? Yeah, this goes in the main XML file, right? How do I know that? Well, because there's only one of these per page, right? There's not a bunch of these clear selected buttons. It's just there's one clear selected button there. We want a checkbox though for each row. So where would that where would we put that 